tell us a bit about your upbringing, your, your journey to faith and into ministry as a priest. So I was born in Sheffield in 1970. <laughs> uh, don't want to give too much away. And I'm from a non-religious family. My parents had me christened as a baby, like lots of people are christened when they're little, but um, didn't actually take me to church. We never went to church. Um, and it was only when I was at secondary school and uh, my friend had a friend who I liked the look of. And I said to my friend Katie, who's he? And she said, oh, he's the vicar's son. And I thought, I think I might start going to church. So I essentially went along to church because I fancied the bloke who was the vicar's son. Um, but God had the last laugh on that one, really. Um, and it was from, actually, in all seriousness, it was from being in a place of invitation, a place where um, I was made to feel welcome, where there was friendship, where there was community, and where I was given a space as a quite an angry teenager, quite a shouty, loud teenager. Now, it's hard to believe that I was quite loud. Um, a place to be able to argue about about the world as I saw it and try and figure out who I was. Tell us about the viral video that kind of brought you from being the priest to then into media. So um, when I started in full-time parish ministry in um, 2011, I think it was, I took over I had three churches and a chaplaincy. And one of my churches that I was looking after was an old priory church. So a big, huge cathedral-like building um, in the middle of a village uh, with lots of seating, absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous building, but a gorgeous building that only did about six weddings a year. And I thought, this is such a great place, we should be doing hundreds of weddings. Um, so I built up the weddings ministry. and. Um, basically anyone who came along to me and said we'd like to get married if I was legally able to marry them I married them um, including Gary and Tracy who had been engaged for eight years and wanted a little bit of something different at their wedding as invariably brides and grooms do they always want their service to be personalized so I um, asked Gary and Tracy what they wanted they said what do you do I said pretty much anything and we uh, came upon the idea of doing a flash mob um, at their wedding. Now I know flash mobs are definitely a bit 1990s but the Church of England is always a good healthy 20 years behind the trends and the curve isn't it? Um, so we did this dance at their wedding, it was filmed um, by their video company, by their videographer that was video videoing their wedding and they put it on YouTube so that the guests that weren't able to be at their big day could come along and be at their wedding and see what had happened um, and we never expected expected it to go where it went and uh, I think the current count on the original clip is about 10 million hits which is a bit weird. <laughs> so then you went from that to Gogglebox, what was that like and what was it like from that moment to be a recognised person on the streets? So I went, so after, go, after the flash mob I got a telephone call from Studio Lambert, the production team behind Gogglebox and um, they asked us if we'd like to be on the show and we didn't just go yeah because it is you know it's not just one of those things when when you wear a dog collar for a living you have to be aware that you're not just representing yourself you're representing um, the organization of the church as well um, and you're representing God ultimately so you have to give it a little bit of thought um, so we we said yes and the reason that we said yes me and my husband graham said yes to it is lots of the christians we'd seen on television lots of the stories of faith we'd seen on television were not the christians that we knew they were the extremes of the story they were the really really bad news about what religion can do and the really really good news about what religion can do the sort of normal average kind of christians that sit and watch tv weren't on telly and we thought well maybe this is a chance to show that christians are normal people they just happen to believe in god um, and so that's why we said yes and it, you know, Gogglebox uh, is regularly watched by over an audience of three million people. It's won BAFTAs and NTAs and all. It's part of the popular culture. And to ha to be a Christian on that show, with that people are talking about, um, is just such an amazing privilege. Do I think anyone's going to fall on their knees in front of reality TV and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour? Uh, no. But do I think they might feel a little bit of warmth about Christians? Yeah, they might do. And that's, that's good enough for me. Um, and the question about being recognised in the street and the whole sort of, you know, people asking for selfies and all that sort of stuff. When you're a vicar, you're a bit of a local celebrity anyway. You can't get round Tesco, no matter how hard you try, because people want to stop you to talk to you. It's just a bigger version of that, really. And if I was shy, I wouldn't have said yes, would I? I love what you said in this last session about you can reach more people through songs of praise 
than the amount of people that go to church in this country. Tell us a bit about that. So it's not about bums on seats, you know, we're not, when, when, we, get to, when we get to those gates, Jesus is not going to say, okay, what's your numbers? It don't work like that. But what we will be asked is, what did you do for the sake of the kingdom? And for me, um, I believe that part of my calling is to be upfront, is to be outgoing, is, you know, I'm a dreadful show off and a bit of an egotistical maniac. So if God can use that, because I genuinely believe that God wants to use every single bit of us, the bits that society might think are brilliant and the bits that they might think are rubbish, God goes, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that. So um, the fact that I'm a show off, God's gone, yeah, all right then. You want to show off? You want to show off? Come with me, I'll let you show off. Um, and that, and that's, it's about using the best of ourselves and the worst of ourselves uh, for the kingdom. And, and so I'm just... And also, do you know what? I do a lot of funerals where there's nothing to say in the eulogy. I want the vicar that does mine to have a good half an hour's worth of material to go at. We saw a real raw side to you in the road to Santiago. Tell us what that experience was like. And the, the, it was tough, but it was a great opportunity again to be on TV and talk about your faith. It was, um, I, think, well, I think the thing about the road to Santiago is I don't like walking. I don't know if that came across. Um, <laughs> And, and when you're a Christian, and by and large, lots of Christians are white, middle-class kind of Christians, when you tell them you don't like walking, it's like they, it, they can't compute that. You know, if you told someone you didn't like swimming or you didn't like riding a bike, people go, oh, fair enough. You say you don't like walking, people just look at you like you've killed a kitten, you know. So it, 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 there's something about Christians and walking that it seems like it's, a, it's sort of a foregone conclusion that if you're a Christian, you must love walking. I don't, all right? I like sofas and televisions and gin and tonic. That's what I like, all right? Um, it, was a, it was a tough gig because of the walking. Everything else was easy. The people bit, they're talking about God bit. I could do that, you know, that's great. I could do that all the time. But the actual one foot in front of the other was the really tricky bit for me. Um, and the other tricky bit is that as a Christian, lots of people presume that they know what you believe. So they'll say, oh, well, you, you believe that the world was made in six days. And you'll go, no, I don't. And they'll go, but, but it says so in the Bible. It also says that you should stone adulterers and not get a tattoo. What, you know, what, it says a lot of things in the Bible. We're not taking it literally. I'm, I'm, I've got a fairly liberal interpretation of that, and I believe it's a document that can be interpreted. You will find Christians that take it literally, and fair play to them. But I don't. And, and this came as a revelation. Now, I think, you know, that um, something as simple as... Uh, I don't think God's an old man on a cloud with a beard. I don't think God's an old man on a cloud with a beard. Now, we would think that, uh, Christians might think that, well, who does believe that God's an old man on a cloud and a beard? I don't, I don't think I know any Christians. But actually, people who aren't of the faith think we still believe that stuff. They still think we believe that God's like some sort of cosmic Santa Claus. Um, and so there's a lot of, uh, there's a massive gap between where we think we are in the conversation about faith in popular culture and where actually we are there's a huge gap you know um people still think we're the dad's army vicars and they're very few and far between these days last question um it must be a challenge not only being a female priest but a female priest on tv <laughs> what challenge a female northern priest on female tv northern priest. <laughs> A female well, northern ginger is, priest on TV. You know, what prejudice or challenges have you faced in the middle of all of that? And what advice would you give to people, that Christians, to be a voice in the media? Well, first of all, you have to be convinced that you've got, that you should be the person speaking. So it's about vocation, it's about calling. You know, do I think that every single vicar in the land, every single Christian in the land should be on telly? No, I don't. Some people are not called to that. Some people are called to, um, to do other things for the faith. I happen to believe that this is part of my vocation. If you happen to believe that it's part of your vocation too, if you've prayerfully considered that, if you've talked it through with spiritual directors, with your parish priest, with all those wise people in your life, and you still think, I think I've got a vocation to the media, well then, you have to go for it. Um, and you have to be confident in that calling. It's like any vocation, whether your vocation is doing the children's work in church, being up at the front, whatever it is, there are no greater or higher uh, vocations and callings we know that you know God doesn't look at the bishops and go oh, they're the best ones um, similarly he doesn't look at the person washing the teacups and go well they don't matter it's all all are welcome in that in that kingdom vocation um, so find out what your thing is and do it as best you can
um, and value your thing whether other people value it or not um, and the prejudices and the challenges that I've faced to be honest with you have been few and far between sometimes the hardest thing is that the minute anyone sees this around my neck is they think they know what I believe and they think they know what I'm going to be like and I find that usually within the first five minutes that changes um, once I've opened my mouth and said they're like they go oh you're not like a proper vicar are you well I'm not really sure what a proper vicar is but I can guarantee that I am one I've got a certificate and everything one more question I did promise um, <laughs> who have been your role models your sort of mentors over the years so um, I have a, a core group of about 16 friends who I call Team Botley who are in a closed Facebook group and um, they are my biggest mentors and advisors and in that group is everyone from the first person that ever invited me to church to a bishop to famous people to non-famous people all sorts of people are in that group and whenever I have something that I need to think about whenever a piece of work comes in that's offered to me I will always run it by them um, my, I put, post my daily diary in there and they pray, pray it through and they also tell me to catch myself on so if I'm offered a piece of work that they think would be really bad for the kingdom and we don't think it's on message then they will say that to me they'll go Kate Butler you've missed it or if I mess up spectacularly I you know, saw you on the one show the other night Kate you were dreadful they'll tell me so that I can then be the best version that I can be so that I can um, fulfill my vocation but I will get it wrong and I will mess it up um, and I have to remember that you know I'm loved and forgiven not just by the people that advise me and look after me but also by my heavenly father which is amazing um, and get a good agent <laughs> who gets it who understands that it's not just about the money it's about building the kingdom